we could start any time and I could edit it a bit. So I guess welcome to our, what is this, the fourth Q&A in a row? Uh, yeah, fourth Q&A, yeah. Awesome. So uh, let's uh, get the show on the road. We can, there's a cash giveaway for everyone who doesn't know. Uh, you were contest rules, Corey, if you want to remind us, it was, they had to join the discord and then invite five friends. Pretty simple. Yeah. Yep. As well as use the code mush five for Aptoid or boost the discord server. So. Yeah. And mush five actually today for about nine more hours, it's an extra 5%. So it's a 10% off day in Aptoid. So good times for everybody. All right. So. Uh, now that that's all out of the way, we might as well begin, eh? Uh, can you use my screen all right, Steph? Uh, yes, I can. You could just call me GK, whatever, Steve. Yeah. It's all good. This is just an... Uh, I'll, so yep. This is for the $25 prize. Okay, uh, okay, so hold on. Are we doing an official spin right now? Yeah. All right, there it is. Okay, so let's just say... Let's pause the prizes. So that's the first one. Let's talk a bit and give people yeah. an incentive to hang around with us for a bit. Oh. It looks like people are mad. They didn't win. <laughs> so Alex just won $25. Is that correct? Yes. So he's the first one. And then the next prize would be $15. Yeah. So let's... Five uh, giveaways. Yeah, let's uh, go to some questions for a bit and ho host it like we do with our normal Q&A and put a yeah. little bit of pause on that. So, is there any questions? Um, Did you see any in the chat? Some people, some some people, people have been requesting recently for me to do a soul guide and what souls to go for, so I'll probably be doing a guide on that next. Man, I, I they should check out my souls. I did one i did one just at like uh 12 hours ago also i did it on like souls on a budget so if you were only gonna get one soul one pink soul yeah and basically uh i'll look at them now if you want to share your screen and go around the different souls but uh basically and i i'd like to ask you this also so the main one that i would do for archers would be the blood stained but one question i have for you you know how the top uh buff can change uh which one the, the top one? so the top one right yeah the top yeah. yeah i i have never seen anyone not get global combo on this one so like is that locked in that that's the one you're gonna get yeah, I think there's two locked in that you can get. So there will be one competitive boss damage, and then you've got a chance to obviously get one for combo. I think the attribute is based off of one of the, the two. Yeah, so if that's the case, that you almost always get global combo, then for archers, the one that you should absolutely go for is the bloodstained, uh, the mushroom head guy on the top left. So the top left, uh, it's the, my, oh, right. Yours might look a little different, but it would yeah, be the one that has attack. Yeah. The, uh, red attack and the red healing. Yeah. And then the other one you would want as an archer would be the combo damage blade duo. Yeah, I went mainly for the Blade Duo because obviously the additional combo, but not only that, the boss damage, that seems to help out like a lot during PvE. Yeah, and then let's just do the simple one, the Warrior. I think there's, I don't know, I, I believe there's there's no choice here. You have to do the HP one. Yeah, it'll be the... Definitely basic attack and HP because the counter, it doesn't, so the red counter and the pink counter, it doesn't go up. So, I'm going to just try to how to explain it. So say like the red combo, for example, on level 23, it'll be the same percentage as it is now, as it would be for pink. 
it's the same for counter, so there's no difference in percentage increase for the different rarities for them. Yeah, and you add a boss duo with it, so... Yeah. Where the HP, you get global HP as opposed to just HP, and you get HP regen. Yeah, the HP regen is quite nice, especially for Warrior. Yeah, like, I, uh... I don't have this because I was Archer when I spent a bunch of money and bought Pink Souls. So I didn't get the Warrior stuff and I've since switched to Warrior and I can't wait to get this Pink Soul. Because it is very good for Warriors. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but they added quite a few new root stones just to be able to week. So now, before there was only the three, and so now they've added Blazing Rock which is the global crit damage as well as iron wall for global crit resistance i noticed something also i thought i noticed uh let me look through i'll i'll look through this while because i i'm i'm the same as you i was doing them and i was like you're talking about the set piece bonuses yeah yeah i noticed some different ones also now where i was like those weren't there before when i was choosing yeah, yeah, so these are the three new ones. Global crit damage. Global yeah, crit I got a global crit damage. Global skill damage. Yeah. I think they added this because, yeah, I don't know if you saw it a few weeks ago, but the devs did say that in the future they're going to be balancing mage. So I believe this is why they did that. Just because obviously now they've got the skill damage because they didn't have anything before. They had, what, basic attack and that's it. Because yeah. Because mages don't need counter or combo, so that's kind of a waste. And then they're going to get a six set of um, basic attack, and that's going to do what? Nothing. Yeah. So now I would set the mage, the best would be obviously four piece set, and then maybe two global crit damage, because you can crit on your skills. Yeah, I would do the same. I, I, you can never go wrong with attack, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, mages need crit, mages need skill. And to be honest, we don't really know too much of what mages need because no one's using them because they suck. Yeah, because they just die. <laughs> yeah, so, so, in, so ba just to circle back to the souls to finish that question for the person... I basically said in my video, like, there is no poor man's route for mage. Like, if you're only going to buy one or two pink souls, you're just not going to compete well as a mage. You need all eight. But uh, yeah. there is a couple that do help. The, my eyes are bad. The, it's the one in the bottom left corner. It starts with a W and it does skill damage and basic attack damage. That's, uh, wildfire yes, that's it. And then the uh, this one starts with an E, and it has crit damage bonus and skill crit bonus. So those would be the two main ones for a mage. But you could, you know, a mage needs everything. So really, stay tuned on mage. Basically, is the answer there. But Warrior is the easiest one to do well if you have a limited budget or no budget. Because you really only need the one pink soul for now. Yeah, PK, what's your thoughts on the leaked by release about in two weeks how there's going to be a new flying pet and a new dungeon? Well, obviously I love more dungeons as long as it's not like the, uh, the ruined city where... Like I want one no, opponent. I want no. one opponent. That's it. I don't want to go through five or six opponents and spend a minute on each dungeon, let each level. <laughs> I, I hate that. So first off, that if it's just a one one off boss trial, I'm super excited. And then the other one, uh, what do I think of flying pets? They they look awesome, and I'm excited. So the dungeon, you, it looks like. Like the actual dungeon, it looks like it is six stages. Uh, so you battle one stage. It's not like in Ruin City where you go through like the five phases of like bosses and then you fight the main guy. It's six individual stages that you've actually got to go to 
and then you've got to defeat the bosses there, and then you move up to the next level. So yeah, I'll show you just now in the Discord. Can you see my screen? Yeah. So this is the dungeon itself, and so you go here, this is the first one. And then once you've beat the bosses here, you can progress to the next one. And then okay. so on. And then once you complete all six, the next day, I believe, resets a new level. Yes, yeah, so I, I think it's I think it's similar. It's just a different interface, just so you know we don't get the same boring stuff. These are a list of rewards that you can get. It's mainly for the marriage as well as for the pet system. Yeah, so the flying pets look way better than regular pets. Like they have percentages in six hundred and skill and attack and uh, we actually know what they're going to be doing. And then you could borrow them and breed them with friends' pets, right? Yeah, so I could borrow your pet and then pay, uh, make your pet with mine, just to make my pet a bit better. Can you borrow my pet, breed, breed it with yours, and then borrow another one from Hulago and then breed all of those together? Um, I don't think we can breed friends. Because I, I could name the one, the baby, with more pet, for example. Yeah, that was a bit of a joke. We all just want to borrow Hulago's pet, and I don't think he's going to have enough to share. Yeah, you can only share one pet at a time, but you can borrow up to ten friends' pets. Yeah. So you can only lend out one pet at a time. Yeah. But not one pet at a time, but that one pet can only be led to one person. We can probably organize something as an alliance too, or server. You buy this pet, we buy this pet, if they're really expensive, and then share them, you know? Well, yeah. Maybe, you know, I think a lot of servers might end up doing something like that. But yeah, I'm excited for them to arrive. Uh, I just, you know, I, I, I worry with these type of games where it never ends. It's just something new to buy all the time. Oh, yeah, that would definitely suck. So, it, it would be nice if they advance more into the storyline rather than into events. Or if there is more events coming to make them like less hits win and more engaging. Yeah, I like when these games... So I like when the more you spend, the more options you have. So like, let's say I face someone and, oh, they're using this mount, these wings. I'll counter with these ones because I bought them and they work well against it. I don't like when every week you have to buy that one because it's better than last week's. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like if, if it's just more options and everybody's the same, yeah, someone who spends more has more options to succeed. But they sh there shouldn't be like a paywall where, oh, you didn't buy last anything last month, so you're screwed. You can't compete with anyone who did. Because then what's the point in spending three months ago if you could just wait till tomorrow and spend and be better than the guy who spent before? Yeah, it, it's quite frustrating that they keep bringing out better stuff to counter the stuff that's already out, but it just needs to give you an incentive to keep buying. Yeah, at least the like the artifact, the Eye of the Raven, it's still maybe the best as long as you get a good draw on that extra skill that it sends. Yeah, plus it's got a chance to proc... Um, Blitz Assault as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're at 15 minutes, so we might as well do another draw, eh? Yep. Uh, this draw will be for the $15. So we did the $25 already, and Alex received that. So let's see who received So wait, before you spin, is Alex eligible again, or is he out? Um, I'll remove one of his entries because he has two because he boosted the Discord twice. Yeah, the one that he... Yeah, that's fair. Alright, so let's spin. That is... I'm holding it now. 
All right. Awesome. Congratulations. So you have all their contact information and how to get it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So just, uh, we'll just get their wallet, their contact information, and then I'll send the stuff over. There might be, it is Mother's Day here. So when the show's done, I'm going to be out for a few hours. But when I get back, I'll send all the stuff. Yeah, yep, no, no problem. problem. All right. All right. So uh, anything else on your itinerary or should I just uh, bring something up? Yeah, you can bring something up unless anyone in the Discord has got any questions. Okay, so as they think or type. What about, uh, so cross server, which is going on now. So it's always good to talk about, uh, what do you think of strategies with the towers? Do you think that it's uh, good to hold the towers and have your server as a target or should you kind of, uh, hold off and go for them at the end? Uh, I think it would be best to first get all the towers in the beginning and then obviously once you've got all four towers, you've got that 80% boost, so you can get points quicker. Once that's the case, everyone can just go quickly get all their points, accumulate it, so we can get this final score. And then, if they take the towers during the days, no bigger, and then just take it, like, last hour or two. Yeah. That's pretty much how I feel too, but organize with your server. Hey, we're going to take the towers now. So now is the time to be online and go kill monsters. So we get that 80% boost. There's no point taking them and then doing nothing. Well, unfortunately for us, our server's kind of dead apart from the top two families, which is ourselves and the other family, apart from they never really want to contribute. So it really is quite difficult for us. But do you think other servers are different than that? Well, I've seen quite a lot of servers where like, lots of people are active, like there's six top families. But but that's like a handful of servers. Don't you think majority are like us? Like we're winning yeah, in Brawl and we do win some cross servers, so we must be okay. But um, majority of the servers, well, I'd say about... 30% of the servers are like ours, and then 70% are actually quite decently active. It just kind of depends on what number you kind of place on the server. So like the top 20 servers in each region will be more active than like 20 plus, because like more people got the game as soon as it came out, so. Yeah. It means like either they was waiting for it, or they just really into it, I don't know. Now, what about the uh, SEA servers, the, the Asian servers? Are they in the same grouping as us? Like, would we ever play them? Or are they so far ahead that that's just not happening? I don't anymore? think we will ever be able to play against them because SEA game you wasn't actually called Legend of Mushroom to begin with. It was called Maple Rush, and then they changed the name to Legend of Mushroom. And the game itself is completely different because they're like, I think, two months ahead of us. Uh, and it's just a completely different game to what we have. So I don't think the servers will have managed. So are they possibly iPods. beta servers? Uh, I, I suppose, but it's more, more of a case of like, I think, two different companies own this game. Mm. One company just the Japanese and Chinese, and then one is the, well, trying to go international. And they have. They've definitely succeeded. They are, I think they're the number one revenue game out there right now. Yeah. At least they were for their it. first month, like, you know, the hype. And then things died down a bit, but I think they're still doing very well. Oh, no, definitely. Uh, they're definitely making enough money off all these events, I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, it's It's still not that expensive a game it's expensive it's expensive but not like at the top end but overall because of uh micro transactions they're doing very well financially oh yeah where other games rely on like a small group of players to be the whales and carry the finances for the company but this game is like target the entire game the entire player base yeah yeah all right, so uh, Family Brawl. We can talk a bit about that. Uh, 
the that was a big topic for us in the first Q and A we had. Uh, you kind of went over different strategies that you used to use, going over winning two lanes versus all three. Now that we know a little bit more about how the scoring system works, and it's better to win three lanes, and we're actually we're facing teams that. Remember, like a couple of days ago, we faced a team that completely tanked. They put zero people in one lane, and then they had like yeah. forty in another. That's because you can now actually reposition the lane. So you, so as I, the leader, can do that. No, um, anyone who is elder, holy uh, bomb treasures, or or leader, they can move people between lanes, swap positions, etc. We can now do everything. Okay, that's good. Uh, so will that change your strategy? It, uh, it would vary depending on who we'll go against. Like if they have like a lot of people with high power, I would put a bunch of people into one lane and then bait them into putting their high level people into that lane. So like on reset, I'll put all my people into that one lane just so they think we're going to completely tank them and wipe them out. And then when it's last second of the event to end, I'll move all my people out properly, just so then they'll waste all them strong people, just on no one. How often do you come, against, come up against an alliance that is on in the last 30 seconds, like you, to change stuff? Quite, quite a lot, to be fair. Um, like, the amount of times I've got to play cat and mouse within the last five minutes because they're just constantly changing lanes. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, so I got a question that not many people, even I don't know. Tell us, you got married, didn't you, to Hulago? Yeah, I didn't get married to Hulago, no. Who'd he marry? I thought it was you. No, he got married to Barrow, but I got married to Ella. Man, didn't Barrow win the lottery, eh? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so what happens when you marry is, so if I go to my avatar here, Eternal Earth, so you can only marry each wedding once, so a lot of the wedding areas first. So if we go to host, uh, cooperation test, oh it's been removed, it was by wedding packs or, you know, wherever it loads up. You, you can, can do the standard, the deluxe, and the luxury, but you can only do one of each type once. So we originally did the luxury, and then we paid 15k diamonds for the basic. That 15k pink diamonds or white diamonds? Yeah. Pink. pink. Yeah. And then we spent $15 on the deluxe. And then we had that wedding today. Doing that gave us the eternal of title which you can only get if you do one of each wedding so we got the loving years from the hundred dollar marriage the fated union from the fifteen thousand diamond marriage and the lifelong soulmate from the fifteen dollar package okay so a couple of questions about this so what do you get that are buffs in the game from getting married okay. other than so you know you know in the affinity area where you can click uh, if you're cordial or whatever and whatever and you get chests so you get that yeah. what else so on our on your two day anniversary you get 15 uh love hearts you get my gloves and then on your one week anniversary you get 90 or 100 sorry i think it is and you get buffs by leveling up your ring. If you get to level 51 ring, you get a completely different skin, as well as level 101. So you're, the screen's a little small right now. What level is your ring, and what's the percentages say? Uh, my ring is currently level 49, and the percentage is 1,500. Oh, wow. I'm level 1 and 10%. Yeah, I'm not married yet. Um, while also married, you can go to host, you affinity, and it tells you your buff. So me and Ellie are on 17,000 at the moment. Our time saved by fertilization is 31,000, uh, 3,100, sorry. And that boosts our fertilization by 8 hours. So we can instantly finish each other's gods no matter what time it's on. 
Wow. So, okay, so now, question. Would there be any benefit to divorcing her and marrying someone else? No. If you divorce, then you lose all of your books. Do you lose the ring level? You don't lose the ring level, but you lose all of your... Um, you'll have to rebuy the marriage. You'll have to rebuy from the tiles, the avatars. Um... But well, the only benefit could possibly be for the ring, just to get the 999 love hearts all over again. So yeah, so that's what I was going to say. Like, you know how on uh, some things, like let's say Awakening oh, Scrolls. Um, agreement divorce, it'll take effect if the player agrees or doesn't reply in 24 hours. Forced divorce, it'll cost 300, 3,000 diamonds. <laughs> So the person could just keep saying no, and as long as they log in every 24 hours? No, so it says that I can do a forced divorce, so I can just instantly end the marriage. Yes, but you'd have to pay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so you know how, like, let's say you do Awakening Scrolls or Soul Upgrades. Every, like, for example, just throwing numbers out there. If you're at level 30 on something, to go to level 31, it's going to cost a lot, right? And you could use that same amount of scrolls or salvage souls and take something else up to level 5 from level 1 and get a lot more benefit. Yeah. yeah. So is does the same thing hold true in the wedding where, hey, we're at like level 50. Could I divorce and marry someone else I already got 5,000 affinity with and then get all the easy rewards at the start to upgrade my wing ring? Would that make it worth it? Um, so when you marry, you get 999 um, love, gem of love and 999 keys. So, and to marry, you also need 1,000 affinity just to get engaged, and then you need 5,000 affinity just to get married. So, it would cost quite a bit to just constantly do that, just for the ring bonus. Yeah. Um, and it'll get quite expensive. I personally don't see the point in wasting the money for it, but obviously, if you've got the money to waste, then... Yeah, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so uh, almost at the half hour mark, we might as well spin the wheel again. And this next spin is for ten dollars. Let's just spin that. And it is Elt Ivian. All right, congratulations. So we got two more $10 spins coming up. Do we have any questions out there? Making a note of that, just so we remember who the winners are. Oh, I see in the chat, what do we got here? Oh, a comment. Seems to me the Scythe is just dominant in PvE and PvP. Have y'all found use for the other ones? Uh, which one is the Scythe? The Scythe. It is the Ivory. Yeah, hold on. You could keep talking. Just give me a sec. Okay. Yeah, let me just load up Ivory just so people know what we're talking about. This is the Scythe. It gives you a chance to use the clone. Oh, let's all over again. By the way, Mira, I saw you joined. Do you have any questions regarding the game? Or are you just here to look? Fair enough. Everything. All right, uh, sorry. So the scythe, is that the new one? Yeah, that's Eye of the Raven that came out. Oh, the Eye of the Raven. Why did he say Scythe? Am I missing something? Um, it's the Scythe. Oh, so he's just saying what it is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But there's nothing in the game that calls it that. No. Okay. Uh, sorry, I had uh, something real life there. So I just want to reread his question and see... Uh, so, 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there are uses for the other ones. I have the harp, and I absolutely loved it before I got the Eye of the Raven. Um, it's strong, and it pushes the enemy back, it, like basically a stun for the half a second launch. But, uh, yeah, I just don't think you can... like. If you're playing with the Eye of the Raven and it does not launch a good second skill at the start, then yeah, it's not as good as the other weapons. But the 20% chance that it's going to give you something really good, and it's more like a 40% chance because if it gives you double blitz or double clone, right? You just don't want like double smoke bomb or something. But uh, if it gives you something good, then it's absolutely well worth uh, the risk. Like if it's if it's yeah. basically one in two chance that it's gonna be dominant. What's your thoughts on the Skyward Blade? Skyward Blade is that the new one that just came out? Yeah. I'm not sure. Like I've. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's that good. Deal 150 percent of current basic damage. Every every ten attacks. No, no, it says every ten attacks with combo or counter skill unleash release a sword aura. Yeah, and your counter and combo is fast, so that's gonna be like every three four seconds. Well, not even that. Like even sooner, depending on you get what four attack speed. So that's four attacks a second. Plus, if you have combo as well, you're probably doing that every second or so. Yeah, my my honest opinion on most of these weapons is most of them are going to be a lot better in a few months when battles last longer than five seconds. Because so many of these things are like every 10 seconds or every 11 seconds. It's like, man, like my battles are six seconds. Yeah. So maybe in the future when battles last... 30 seconds, I can get two or three of those in, then it might help. Then I might make some changes and consider it. But until then, I don't know. Like, you might as well just go in with the highest HP and highest attack and cross your fingers. That's basically oh, my thoughts. Defense is very helpful as well. Especially, Especially against the bosses in the soldier, uh, Dark Trials. Yeah, I uh, I'm I'm so far off on those trials that it's not even worth it. Like I used to adjust all my stuff and try to get past the next level, and now it's like I reach a point where it's like, oh, I, I I'm done. There's no chance that if I make a few skill changes, I'm gonna beat this person. Yeah, but also keep in mind you are a warrior. Yes. So with the dark trials, they can use skills. So even if you stun them, they can still attack. As well as um, your countering, and their attack is just insane. So that's not helpful whatsoever. Yeah, I've uh, I've often I've considered changing to archer every couple of weeks just to go up in levels, but I don't know. It annoys me that warrior like it, the game wants you to pay gems to be good at PVE and PVP, and they don't allow both to be good at yeah, both. Yeah, it's quite frustrating, but I think it just gives players the incentive to set up multiple classes rather than just trying to stick to one. Yeah, but four thousand gems to change and four thousand to change back is a lot. I, I don't know, because gems is actually quite easy to get, like, just from playing and doing all the things, like, you get 200 from Flappy Pepe. Yeah, but if, if you change five times in one week, that's a thousand less Clockwinders you can buy. Oh, no, definitely. It does stack up if you do it quite a lot. Maybe, like, once a week or something like that would be fine. Just during the week, go... Do PvP and then on the weekend just stick to PvE. Yeah. Or even the other way around. And and you can get by cross server as an archer. You don't have to fight people. You well, could just go hit when, the towers and. Well, just even then, like Wednesday to Sunday, you just do 
Warrior, and then, and then Monday, Tuesday, do Archer, because then you yeah, at least do Warrior for Brawl, and then Crossover Showdown as well. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I need a mount for Warrior, so that was actually a question in uh, the Reddit group, was do you think these will cycle back, or are we done? Like, will we ever get a chance at the Blue Ox again? Um, yes, yes they, they will cycle, cycle back, back. I, but, but I, I don't, don't think they'll come out straight away, away. it will just release some few ones, ones and then once it's stopped releasing them, them it'll circle back because that means like every week they're going to need to come up with a new design and new buffs and all, all this just to keep it going, going. so they, I believe they'll most definitely circle back. I think you underestimate these games' creativity. Oh, Blue Ox? Well, here's a purple buffalo. <laughs> yeah. And it has completely well, different buffs. Well, I mean, like, just doing that each time, like, if you're here, it's just going to be an infinite page of scrolling or going down. And I feel like lots of people will lose interest because... If it don't come back out, then you can't level them, so it's pointless. You won't be able to upgrade them or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, someone asked. Uh, someone asked in an old question that I see from the last show I missed. Has anyone reached a the feather mount? Do you know anyone who has the feather mount? So it comes after oh. the broom. You're in wings right now. Oh, uh, yes. Um, I'm pretty, pretty sure a lot of those. Mm, I don't know. That's pretty high. No, the go to re. Uh, yeah, right there. Nah, I'm sure I've seen a lot on the feather. That's cool. If I had that, I would ride that. I ride my broom. I think it's cool. Uh, what's Lord using at the moment? Oh, have you seen Lord's new profile picture? Is it one of the ones you made up that you showed me? Yeah. Then I have seen it, but I haven't seen it in game. Yeah. There we go. Uh, he's got the bullfrog oh, too. Oh, oh. Yeah, he's got the bullfrog on at the moment. Man, Burrow is pun punching up in that relationship. <laughs> he's taking advantage of Lord. <laughs> All because he is impatient. He's like, you didn't answer. I'm like, we're in different time zones. I woke up, I had like seven relationship request. Well, he said, he said to me, but you married Circo, so he left you. <laughs> I woke up and like seven people in our alliance sent me like requests. I clicked on every single one and they said expired. So like the person went with someone else. And then the only one that still worked was Circo. And Circo is a good player and spends a decent amount on the game. So whatever. Yeah, meanwhile, I ended up you know, you know on the spring journey, journey event. Yeah. Yeah, if you go to Oh I I've seen you, don't worry. Sweet love. Yeah, yeah you you're number one. Oh Hula go past you. No, so I I picked him as my partner for the game. Oh, so, so you, you don't have to marry the same person as you have in this game? No. So ah. I with Lego and he bought this. Uh, package and it went from 9.99. Okay, wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change what you just said there. He bought everything. <laughs> well, yeah, he bought all these, but <laughs> since he bought this, he unlocked it for me also. So I managed to get all of these rewards for free. Ah, uh, yeah, I bought those too. So Circle must have got them too for free. And the passion here goes off of the passion you both use. So, so I've used 762 fashion, and which is like the flowers or the chocolate that you give out. Yeah. And then Legos used 5,000 nine center. And uh, so. Ooh, casual catching up. Yeah, he's a, uh, you know, closet coiner. Yeah, that's how I've got my position. I don't know these people. Yeah, I'm trying to find that uh, spending thing that you... There's so many buttons, like, oh. 
It's in Sweet Love. Okay. Sweet love. Okay. Anyways, uh, while we're uh, quieting down, so 45 minutes, we might as well do the second last spin, see who the winner is. All right. Let's spin it out real quick. And it is... Trisky. Oh, there we go. Should have had the applause on the whole time. It's nice. It, it has been. Oh, oh, I just didn't hear it. Maybe I talked too much. So, is this the end of the Pepe event? Like, this is it? I believe so, yeah. Once this is gone, then the decorations in the parking walls will go, and then you won't be able to get it anymore. Oh, right. Yeah. The, so how high have you gone in the parking decorations for Pepe? Because they're limited time only. So I bought the lamp to level two so far. And I've bought one of the fence of the gate or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm looking. It looks like I am also level two on the gate. Yeah. And the lamp is level two as well, but I'm holding 900,000 coins, so I'm definitely going to be increasing them a little. Yeah, I'm holding on to my coins at the moment because I'm just waiting for like, the last few days and then I'll probably see what I've got, what level I can get each one to the bar I've probably invested into it. Yeah. All right, we got any other questions in the chat? All quiet in there. Just lots of lurkers today. Oh wait, there is. It says three, three, three comments since I last looked. Hi, how can I join the giveaway? Think it's too late now. Uh, okay, so we could tell you how to join the next giveaway. We'll do this probably once a month giveaways. And basically, are you going to run it the same, Corey? Well, why don't you tell them what the giveaway was this month? And it'll be similar with maybe a couple changes to it to make sure people can still enter even though they entered before. So what we did to enter the giveaway this time around is either invite five friends into the Discord server and get them to submit your username to enter into the giveaway. Or you can use Aptoid, you don't need to spend, just set up your account, use our code MUSH5, get the verification in the uh, Aptoid verification channel. Once you've got the role, then you can enter the giveaway by typing in the thread that we've created to actually enter them submissions or boost the Discord server. All right, so there you go. So it'll probably be something very similar next month, maybe with a little twist on it somehow. So I have a question for you. Remolga has the gold uh, text color for the name. What does that represent? Because I always, I always like that and think that's one of the best colors. So gold, his name is gold because he's got the Q and A participant one role. He part, this is his first Q and A he's participated in, so he gets the Q and A participation one role. Once he joins for a second time, so if he joins next week, he'll get a brand new role for Q and A participant two. Nice, good stuff. But he might lose his favorite color. Well, we'll be bringing out a self role channel in the future where you can select the color of your roles that will be opened up to people who use Aptoid or Boost the Server or even got the Q&A Master Role. Nice. So would you like uh, have a basket of like five colors you've earned and then you could choose any of them? Yeah, basically it will just be a list of colors. So like red, orange, gold, so whatever. Like just a huge list of colors and you select the color of your choosing and then it'll be the very top role. So it'll change your name to that color of your choosing. Awesome, good stuff. Uh, okay, any other questions out there? Stuff uh, you guys would like us to talk about in game? What did you think of the lucky spinner this time? I thought it was uh, one of the most subpar ones. One of the first times I didn't spin at all. 
then the bull, the, there's the bullfrog. Sorry, someone just posted it in the chat then. The game codes are expiring one month. It, do you mean the redeemable codes? That it's in the redeemable codes channel? Um, it varies. If it's from a limited event, then yes, they will expire. So, for example, if they came out during the Easter event, then it will just be limited for that event. If it came out for the Peppy event, it will be limited for that event. So once that event's over, the code will no longer be available. However, if it's just a code for milestones, for example, the official Discord recently reached 200k members, so they created a new role called DC200k, which basically stands for Discord 200,000. Yeah, those, uh, they haven't come out like they used to, eh? No, uh, they mainly brought out the new ones during release, just to give, obviously, people more of a start. But there's still quite a number of codes that's at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, some of the event is not here in my game because of my server. What do you mean by that? So, do you mean, like, you didn't receive the Easter event or, like, the Gold Rush event? Not Gold Rush, sorry, it was called Gold Theft, I believe. The love thing, for example, we don't have it. So, the, that'll be because I take it you're not on day 15 yet. Uh, you'll probably be like, this is your first or second week actually on the game, I'm assuming. If that's the case, then that's probably why. It's, yeah, it's your first day. So, it don't come out straight away for new servers. However, you may experience this in like two weeks time or a month time. It comes out depending on the release of your server. So I think this was mainly for... To receive this love event, you need to be playing since the 15th of last month. And that's how you get entered into this event. Also, GK, regarding what you were saying about Lucky Spinners, uh, did you see the Lucky Spinner calendar that I made? Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, Re, you can see the schedule of Lucky Spinners, like when the Lucky Spinners will come out. Uh, however, the limited time event schedules isn't really out. However, I can tell you in two weeks, Around day 20 to 30, the is reversible showdown, and I would assume you'd have a limited time event like two weeks after that, or maybe even a week before it. You will probably get a limited time event at least once a month. Yeah, some of the stuff changes a little bit though. Like, what was uh. Remember there was that mount that was supposed to counter stuff? Like it was supposed to counter blitz just like the wings did. Oh, but so it, and it was supposed to be out like a week ago and we haven't got it yet. Yeah, so when are we going to be getting that? I think that'll come out either next week or the week after. It will be coming out in a Lucky Spinner event, I don't believe. I'm pretty sure it'll come out in an actual event, such as like this love event. I think it would drop at about the same time as like Flying Pets or the new dungeon. Yeah, hmm. I also suspect maybe there'll be a cat event around that time as well, once these do launch as well. Because they do, by like looking at how they do it, it's normally a cat event once a month. We've been playing for two months, we've had two now. So it's around every month they release something new. Yeah, I like when the Lucky Spinner has the option to change. Yeah, like change it, change and get a red soul too. 
Yeah, that's not every week though. So I don't know if you saw the schedule on the Lucky Spinner calendar that I made. Every second week. So the first week will be some like a mountain or an artifact. And then the second week there'll be a red soul selection as well as a random mount artifact or back accessory. It's different for each server, so it's kind of hard to know what server's going to release for what in that aspect. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to keep an but eye yeah, out for that. It'll, it'll go Mount Red Every Soul. Every three-day new server. Mount Red Soul. So, this, uh, Remolga has a question. Do new servers regenerate every three days, or does it vary? Um, every three days, a new server will generate. What do you mean by I that? I think he like, means, does a new server open every three days? A new server opens every time the previous one is full. So, if you're on IU49 right now, then once that server's full, then IU50 will come out. And then once IU50 is full, IU51 will be out, and so on. And they said that they were going to, so when people quit on old servers, so like on our server, we have people who've quit, but we're full and no one can join. They said they were looking into doing something about that. I wonder if they will open it or if they will just merge and when they will do this. I believe they're just going to add server merging because I've heard rumors of early servers already merging. Um, it's because they came on and saw lots of like high families in their server. So it, from the release, by the, well, announcement that they made in the official Discord, it says that it'll be server migration as well as merging. So you can migrate to other servers as well as servers merging together. Huh, I wonder how that will work and if they will, how much money it will cost to migrate. Yeah, it'll probably cost like 10k gems, you know this. Oh, I think it will cost money. Uh, I think you'll have to get a token for it. Never. You don't think so? Well, we never know until it obviously releases. But I guess gems are money, right? Like, you want a certain amount of gems, buy some packs, and it's easy, easily there. Or log in and grind every day. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, if there's no other questions, I think we can probably do our final spin and wrap it up. So just a reminder to everybody, these uh, cash giveaways are once a month. We host a Q&A every Sunday at the same time. Uh, it For me, it is at 1 p.m. Eastern time in North America. What time is it for you, Corey? Uh, currently it's 7 p.m. in UK, however... So it starts at 6 p.m.? It starts at 6, yeah. Okay, so that's basically the time frame for it, and that would be if we went by. Do, does every server have the same game time? Like my game time says twenty hours right now. No, it depends on your region. So like, okay, me and you are in the same game and in the same region. So that means that's why it's twenty. Okay, so there's no universal server time that I could tell people to join. So that's it, basically. Wow. 6 p.m. UK time, 1 p.m. North American Eastern time. And we have a question and answer every Sunday. Welcome to pop in. If you're a veteran, you can join in and talk and give advice. Or if you're a new player, you can ask for advice. And uh, then we have cash giveaways once a month in here. Join the Discord. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let's get to the final spin. Animon. All right, Animon 35. And I think only one of these people we know, right? Who won? Like, no, as in play with them. Yeah, that was Alex. 
Yeah, so awesome to see new people win and people that we don't know. So send me the information of those people. Like you, you obviously can get a, contact them easier than I can. You have a list of who they are. And then, uh, like I said, I'll be Mother's Day right here in North America. So I'll be away for a few hours, but I will settle that up and send it to them once we get their contact information. Uh, any last second questions out there or are we going to wrap this up? Looks, uh, I see one comment in there. In Germany, it's cur currently, yeah, 20 hours. So it started at 19 hours for you and Turkey started at 20 hours. Awesome. Awesome to see people all around the world in here. All right. So uh, that's it. Tune in next week. And thanks, Corey. Thanks, everybody. Yep, see you next time, DJ. All right, see you back in the game. Get some more cross-server action going. All right, see you guys. All right, see you in a bit.